You're watching the Moto G Pure disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Let's start off by removing the SIM tray. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and then we're going to run it along the edges and pop off the catches. Now before we can completely lift up and remove the back housing, there's some adhesive around the camera lens cover as well as the fingerprint reader. So we're going to have to gently pry those off while lifting up and removing the back housing. The back housing is made of plastic. And there's some graphene film on the inside, as well as some antenna flex cables on the top and bottom. There are 19 T6 or Torx 6 screws which need to be removed. Now that the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. The camera lens glass cover can be removed by applying heat and gently prying it off. Here's a look at the other side. Before we proceed, we need to disconnect the battery cable. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. There's some copper tape covering this flex cable which we need to peel off so we can disconnect it. There's a coaxial cable on the bottom right corner of the board which needs to be disconnected by just popping it off. And there's some graphene film on the top covering the connector for the front facing camera which we need to peel off so we can disconnect and remove the front facing camera. There's a single T6 screw on the bottom right corner of the board holding it down which needs to be removed. There's a small catch on the bottom left of the board which we need to bypass in order to lift up and remove the main board. On the main board, there's a 13 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel depth lens. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here and the headphone jack is located on top covered with a rubber gasket. There's also a secondary microphone located below the shield and some copper tape over the shields. On the other side, the proximity sensor is located on top. The SIM card and memory card reader is located here and there's some thermal paste on top of the copper tape on the back shields. Once the copper tape and shields on the back are removed, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM as well as the chip over here. It's time to remove the bottom speaker assembly. Here's a better look at that. Let's disconnect the flex cable, connect the main board to the subboard and the other end of the coaxial cable. There's a single T6 screw holding down the subboard which needs to be removed. Once the screw is removed, we can lift up and remove the subboard. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port, a liquid damage indicator, which is this white sticker in the center, and the primary microphone located under the shield. Here's a look at the other side. In order to remove the battery, we need to use some isopropyl alcohol, since there are no pull tabs to help us pry the battery off. So we're gonna apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry off. Here's a better look at the battery. And even with isopropyl alcohol, it's really difficult to pry this battery off. The adhesive underneath is really strong. Once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen underneath, which is right up to this opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace your screen, you need to take the back housing off, as well as remove the screws on the top and bottom cover and remove those covers, and then disconnect the battery cable and this flex cable over here, which connects to the screen and the subboard over here. You'd also disconnect this end of the flex cable over here, and then you would pry off the battery, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cable to the opening over here and over here, and reassemble your phone. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner. The flex cable for the volume key and power button is located on the side and it's held down with adhesive. 
and the earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. There is also another liquid damage indicator underneath the SIM tray which is the white sticker over here. For the repairability score I give this phone a 6 out of 10. The back housing is easily removable without the use of heat. However, there are a number of components that need to be removed to gain access for the screen cable for screen replacements. Also, the adhesive underneath the battery is really strong, so it's difficult to pry the battery off. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, reapply the back housing. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video.